when you meditate, you got to watch your mind. You focus on the breath, but you can't help but seeing the mind. In the beginning, it's difficult because you see the mind wandering all over the place. You tell it to stay put, and it's like a little puppy that hasn't been trained. It just comes running right after you and then running away. But you have to be very firm with it and keep bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back. And after a while, it gets a little bit more tame. But even then, you can see that the mind has this huge potential for creating a lot of stress. We don't like to see this, but if we don't see it, then there's no way we're going to be able to cure the problem. To so just accept the fact that the mind creates a lot, a lot of stress for itself. Even though everything we do is for the sake of happiness, still, it, we can create a lot of pain. So try to give the mind a sense of well-being here with the breath, so that the normal happiness that it goes running out after outside doesn't have quite so much appeal. There's not that hunger to go running around. Allow the mind to settle in, and then you'll be able to see, okay, when, when you leave here, you're creating a lot of trouble, for the most part. I mean, there are times when you do have to think and you do have to plan. But most of our thinking just goes, it's like a radio that's just kept on all day, all day, all day. Or you go to, like going to someone's house where they have the TV on all day, all day. Whether they're listening or not, okay, it's still there in the background and it's seeping into their minds. And the same with all this thinking that goes on in the mind. Some of it you know, is just background noise. And yet it does have a big impact on the mind. So you want to be able to see that. And to see that, you have to get the mind really, really still. And that's when you see, okay, the suffering causes itself can be cured. You don't have to do those things. This is why the Buddhist teachings are not pessimistic. He talks about suffering and stress, but that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is the end of suffering, the end of stress. And it's something we can all do if we put our minds to it. This is how we get started, getting the mind to settle down. Because once it's settled down, then you can see when it's moving. If it's not settled down, it's always moving around, so you have no idea which movements cause which experience of stress. But when things are very still in the mind, you can begin to see connections.